So some people are so convinced about something and it has nothing to do with the truth. It's their truth. It would be amazing if she was the one, you know? Um, I'm just going to share my story a little bit. Since you don't have a long time, I'm trying to do that. It's in your one. Which one is that? Okay. If I'm going to say this, because I'll try to mix. I'll try to mix. Because a lot of people who listen to us just speak in Rwanda. And uh, you know, when I started music, I was in Rwanda. And my vision was to just do Kenya Rwanda and music in Kenya Rwanda. So when I came to the US, you know, living a life without God is to fool yourself. Um, I grew up in church, like most of you know. I sang in a choir. And they say my voice was beautiful, so I could do more with that. I went outside of the church. And they started singing and you know, my and I met and I started singing and I met Mani and I got famous. You know, sometimes when you're looking for something, you finally find it. At that time, you might understand that that's not what you needed. And I said, I'm going to ask you a question. We are looking after, we are running after money. Some are planning to finish their studies. Other are going to different businesses. But every time you reach the goal, you only want more. And at some point in my life, I was wondering, what am I looking for in life? Because everything I wanted, I was, I was seeing it. Um, and it was easy. I was making money easily. People said, love me. I, you know, when you go in a big, in a big crowd, and people are singing your name, you might feel something about it. But there's also a personal life that nobody knows. Some people manage to, to suffocate that life and fake everything. They manage to, to pretend. But it really takes the grace of God to come out of that. I was in my room in Texas. I had uh, 
I had different conferences all over the world. I even went back home. Everything was good. But suddenly something hit me out of nowhere. I just realized that everything I was looking for, I got it. But my heart was just racing all the time. People say I was uh, romantic and because of love songs. But the craziest thing about love songs, the ones that are singing the songs, they're not automatically, oh, they're not romantic. I had a girlfriend at the time. Um, she's my wife now. Um, our relationship was weird. Because people assume somehow I was romantic. But the truth is, I was selfish. You see, in a relationship, you might say you're in love, but it only takes a little bit of frustration. You realize you're not in love. So that kind of love is fake. I don't care how much you think you love. It's just, it takes one person to make you mad, you know. So that kind of love is centered in selfishness. So when I met my wife, I tricked her into me being a good, a cool guy and, you know, romantic and all that. She didn't even know I was famous in my country, no. I don't know that. She didn't know that. So when she got to know it, she realized it was a problem. You know, if you go to a concert, and you have a wife, and she sees that every girl is looking for you, it can make you very insecure. So, we started having weird relationships, like in a way that it was, she was supposed to be doing something, then I'm happy. If she doesn't do it, I'm not happy. We had so much, so many fights, unnecessary fights. And in the middle of everything, I was getting lost. I was lost. Somehow. So, so I was having an issue with my girlfriend at the time. I was confused. I didn't know where I was going with life. I didn't know where I was going with life. So things started getting really, really bad. Some of the things she didn't even know. Because of being famous, I, I learned a way to, to keep everything for, you know, on, on me and for myself. Nobody knew anything about me. A lot of famous people, that's what they struggle with. Some of them are the ones that 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 are the that this happens among the young the famous people. But I can ignore it. I call that so that thing happened to me too. I was in Belgium one day in Brussels. I had a concert. The whole thing was packed. We had a great concert. I went back in my room. I never felt so empty in my life. What I'm talking about, you might not relate. But I pray to God that you are convinced. You know, 
you know, people who will go to hell. It's not because they didn't, they didn't hear these things. It's because they didn't believe it. Have you ever had a, a close, maybe like your mom or your father or your sister who passed away? Sometimes it's not something you thought about that they would go, you know? But when they go, you're almost shocked. So the question is like, did you think they were going to live forever? The difference is because you just don't believe it. You don't know. Your heart is not convicted about those things. Unless the, the reality of God is deep in your heart, you keep forcing these things. But you don't have to hit rock bottom for you to change your mind. Some people receive it, some people don't. And it's okay. There's no way in the Bible, um, the Bible, there's no way the Bible says we will all go to heaven. There's no way that says that. Do you know that word? Like we will all go to heaven. And it's not to say that we should do this so we can go to heaven. You know, we are saved so, can, so heaven can come into us. Some of us, heaven has started already. When we take off from this place, it will be just like a continuation. So, some people, they say they're Christians. But they don't believe it. Are you surprised? Because every time when somebody dies, they say he went to heaven. That statement always bothered me. You can't live with an assumption, you know? You can't just assume your whole life. And for me, I don't, I'm, like, I'm the kind of person that don't, I don't settle with assumptions. Either I know it or I don't. But I don't want to live in uncertainty. You know? A lot of religions, they promise heaven. They, they even tell them, you have to do this and do this to, be, to go to heaven. But there's only one person the promised what we say, that you can know you can go to heaven today. You don't have to wait to die. I think that's better, you know. I'd rather believe somebody that says that they know than believe somebody who says, I might or I might not. There's only one person in this whole universe that claimed. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one person. There's no man that even say that. I do, I do a lot of readings, by the way. Over here. Since long ago. Yes, I wanted to know the truth about life. Because I didn't want to be wrong, you know. What's the point of having everything and have everybody applaud you, but yet you are losing. And to one of you has that at the end, you know. I can't believe that I'm not going to be able to do it. I grew up uh, loving Michael Jackson. When he died, I was young. I mean, you have to be stupid to ignore everything that happened. The guy was having a blast at some point. He, he had a good time, let's say. He had an amazing concert. People, people were fainting. Crying with tears. I said, what do they see? That I don't see. But you see, this is what happens. Our minds are programmed. 
And it starts when we are young. We create passions in our hearts. We think a certain way. And somehow those things start controlling us. And something manifests in your body. And you say this is real. It's not real. You know, America is almost falling apart right now. There's so much confusion going on. But let me tell you something. Truth is an absolute. Truth is a straight line. And truth is a person. Truth came here on earth at some point. And he proclaimed that it was truth. He said he was the way. And the life. So how can you ignore all those things? And even on assumptions. Let me talk to you about purpose. When I was young, I wanted to know where I was supposed to do at, at, at every step of my life. I used to think a lot. And my mother would come to me, what are you thinking about? And I realized she wouldn't even understand what I'm thinking about. But I never said anything. I started having visions when I was young. On my bed. I see something. I wake up in the morning. I see exactly what I saw in my bed. I have some dreams. Jesus will come in my dreams. Yes, I can see the I thought maybe I was brainwashed. Because my life was going in a way that was completely opposite of where. So I wondered, what am I supposed to be doing? Because I said, if there's such a thing as a purpose, and I lose it. Then my life is meaningless. Let me tell you something. You were born. What I would say? Your parents didn't know it was you coming. They only wanted a child. They didn't know it was Patrick. They didn't know how you were going to look like. So they had no idea. They, they had no idea who you were going to be. But it's one person who knows who you are. That same person eventually will have to face him at the end. This is the only chance you get to make up your mind. When I go places to uh, talk about my testimony, I don't, I don't always say they will believe what I'm saying. It's not my business really to make you believe what I'm saying. I was only told to tell you. I had gained so much followers all around the world. But I realized there was nothing I had to give to them. Even if I gave them a song, that song will fade away at some point. But I had to give them something they would stay with. Something that would keep them. That would keep them alive. Before I make up my mind, I counted my cost. I said, if I have to be poor, if I have to, be on, I have to go on the streets, if I have to start over, I was okay with it. Only because of one reason. Because I understood who had called me. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you why most people don't believe. There's a, the Bible is the standard, is the truth of God. You cannot make up your own truth. And if you don't receive that word and take it serious, you will live in assumptions. 
So I took my Bible. I started reading the Bible. In my room. I said, God, you have to talk to me. I'm so confused. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want. I don't even know who I am. And I believe you know. For one year I was in my room. I was praying. Days. Months. And I thought somehow God would walk in the room one day. And say, hey, my child. I'm right here. That's not what happened. As I was praying, my spirit was literally being energized. I was changing before I knew. I started really understanding things I never understood. I'll talk to myself and answer myself. And I came to realize the Holy Spirit was real. I had so many encounters in my room. At some point I knew God was real. You know, if I even told you, I saw Jesus. You won't believe it. So me telling you that I saw Jesus is not Because even the disciples were with Jesus. They still, they still denied him. And they were with him. It's only the Holy Spirit that convinces. It's not my words. It's not my experience. My experience is only good for me. I know and I'm sure. But do you know? Are you sure? 